Welcome to our channel. This is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John and today I have another 50th anniversary video. This is The Doors LA Woman. So before I begin, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I do rock and metal reviews, rankings and more. LA Woman was released on April 19th, 1971 on Elektra Records. And this is the last album to feature Jim Morrison as he would die three months after the album's released. This album was a lot more stripped down than the preceding albums. The album is more influenced by the blues and more reminiscent of their earlier work. On this album, they co-produced it with the sound engineer Bruce Botnick. According to the band, the recording process was a lot more laid back and fun. They spent a lot of time jamming in the studio. They didn't have a lot of material and this was because of the change of producer. And the songs on the album deal with topics such as love, life in Los Angeles, and human experience. But the common theme is that they were talking about things they found in Los Angeles. In the end, the album was basically a mix of blues and rock. So the album opens up with The Changeling, and this was also released as a B-side for Riders on the Storm. And this was uh, the first song that they recorded. The song is about a changeling or a human-like creature that is found in folklore. This is a blues rock song. It has a funk element and there's even an influence from James Brown. They consider the lyrics to be pro prophetic. You know, they say, I've lived uptown, I've lived downtown, but I've never been so broke that I couldn't leave town. And this song is very well loved. Rolling Stone magazine called it a garage style classic. And it was also considered to be a tribute to James Brown. The next song is called Love Her Madly, and this was the first single from the album. It was also one of the highest charting hits of The Doors, peaking at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. Robbie Krieger composed the music on a 12-string guitar, and the lyrics were inspired by his relationship problems with his girlfriend, Lynn, who later became his wife. The title was inspired by Duke Ellington when he uh, said the phrase, we love you madly. And there are even some people who call this song like cocktail music. There's a B-side to this single called You Need Meat, Don't Go Further. And this one has Ray Manzarek on vocals. And this is also the only one that Ray uh, recorded vocals while Jim Morrison was with the band. The next song is called Been Down So Long. The lyrics were written by Jim Morrison. The songwriting was uh, by the rest of the group and the theme uh, of the song really deals with like depression and a few other things. But the song is very bluesy and Robbie Krieger plays a slide guitar on this song. So this is really a good deep track. The next song is called Cars Hits By My Window. And this is probably one of the lesser known songs by The Doors. It's one that like people don't really talk about too much. It's very slow, it's bluesy, and it's just the kind of song that makes you feel like you're sitting in a bar late at night drinking whiskey, watching a blues band. That's just how it feels. So this is a really good deep cut also. So the last song on side one of the record is the title track, LA Woman. So these lyrics were written by Jim Morrison. They were inspired by a 1963 novel called City of Night. And that was written by John Ritchie. And the song is basically describing the city of Los Angeles as if it were like a woman. You know, many people remember the phrase, Mr. Mojo Rising, and that's just an anagram of uh, Jim Morrison's name. This is also the longest song in the album and close to eight minutes. So when you flip the album over, the second side of the record starts with a song called La America. This is a very different kind of song. It actually sounds a little bit like doom metal or something like that. It's very psychedelic. You hear a slow guitar playing this riff. There's some very haunting keyboards that come in. The drums sound like a marching band and the guitar just keeps playing this riff like over and over again with uh, eerie keyboards. Towards the middle of the song, it starts to sound more like a traditional door song, but it really still retains that like eerie quality to it. And towards the end of the song, it does kind of get like a little happier, I guess I can call it that. But it's still 
a very strange song for the album. I actually like it a lot, but it's a very different type of song for The Doors. The next song is called Hyacinth House, and this was recorded on a four-track tape machine as opposed to the other songs, which are recorded on a more professional eight-channel equipment. Jim Morrison actually recorded the vocals in a bathroom, and the lyrics were inspired by Greek mythology. The Greek god Apollo had a lover named Hyacinth. So according to the story, uh, Apollo accidentally killed Hyacinth in a discus throwing contest. So this song is uh, considered to be one of the best deep cuts from the album. The next song is called Crawling King Snake. It's a traditional Delta blues song from the 1920s. The first recorded version was by uh, Big Joe Williams in 1941 and this song had also been performed by John Lee Hooker. And this was one of the songs that the Doors used to listen to while they're on the road. And one day they decided to record it, but they saved it until this album before releasing it. The next song is called The Wasp, Texas Radio and the Big Beat. And this is a more of a traditional Doors song. Jim Morrison speaks the opening verses and this is just a really big like blues jam. In this song, they uttered a line called uh, Stoned Immaculate, and that uh, line would be used as the title of uh, Doors' uh, tribute album that was released in the year 2000. That one had Aerosmith, The Cult, Stone Temple Pilots, among others. The last song is called Riders on the Storm, and this is one of the most well-known songs. It's a great song and a perfect song to uh, close the album, considering that this is the last Doors song to feature Jim Morrison. It was released as a single. It reached number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100. And it is a psychedelic rock and a jazz song. So according to uh, Robbie Krieger and Ray Manzarek, it was inspired by a country song called Ghost Riders in the Sky, a cowboy legend. And this is one of their most popular songs from their entire discography. So that is it. Let me know what do you think of LA Woman? How does it stand up against the other albums in The Doors' discography? The Doors will later release an album called Other Voices Without Jim Morrison later that same year in 1971. And I will talk about that album when that anniversary rolls around. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Tomorrow I should have a ranking of the first eight albums by the band UFO. So stick around for that. And I'll see you in the next one.